If you want to understand the political history and the government of the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, the CNMI, then it is crucial to understand the covenants, Guahusipulan, and the covenants is the name for the formal political status agreement that established and defined the political relationship between the Northern Mariana Islands and the United States of America. According to the section-by-section -section analysis of the Covenants from the Marianas Political Status Commission, the Covenants is a binding agreement, like a contract or a compact. The purpose of the Covenant is to establish a Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. A Commonwealth is the name given to a self-governing political entity, which is closely attached to another larger political unit, such as a nation. In this case, the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands is in a permanent political union with the United States. The Commonwealth relationship embodied in the Covenants is patterned after the relationship between the United States and Puerto Rico, as well as the relationship between the United States and the territory of Guam, though it contains a number of significant features not present in either of those relationships. The Commonwealth relationship contained in the Covenant provides assurances of local self-government, which would not be available under a traditional territorial relationship. The Commonwealth relationship assures a permanent political union with the United States, permits the people of the Northern Marianas to become U.S. citizens, and provides other benefits which would not be available if a looser and less permanent relationship such as free association were adopted. The Covenant consists of a preamble and 10 articles. The preamble sets out four crucial reasons which led to the preparation of the Covenant. First, that under the Charter of the United Nations and under the Trusteeship Agreement, the people of the Northern Marianas are guaranteed the right to freely express their wishes of self-government or independence. Second, that the United States supports the desire of the people of the Northern Mariana Islands to exercise their inalienable rights of self-determination. Third, that the people of both the Northern Marianas and the United States share the goals and values found in the American system of government. And finally, that the people of the Northern Marianas have expressed their desire to be politically affiliated with the United States. The preamble concludes with the purpose of the covenant, to establish a self-governing commonwealth for the Northern Mariana Islands within the American political system, and to define the future relationship between the Northern Mariana Islands and the United States. Upon approval of the Covenant by the United States, the Marianas District Legislature and the people of the Northern Marianas, the Covenant becomes a mutually binding agreement that constitutes a legitimate act of self-determination for the people of the Northern Marianas. I will summarize the 10 articles of the Covenant, primarily utilizing a statement by Edward D.O.G. Pengalinen, Chairman of the Marianas Political Status Commission, and the section-by-section -section analysis of the Covenants. Article 1 deals with the political relationship between the Northern Marianas and the U.S. and established the Northern Mariana Islands as a self-governing commonwealth in political union with and under the sovereignty of the United States of America upon the termination of the trusteeship. The article guarantees the people of the Marianas maximum self-government. Thus, the people of the Marianas will be able to formulate and adopt their own constitution and will have the power to modify and change provisions of their constitution without hindrance from the U.S. government. Of significant importance, Article 1 provides the mutual consent provision, which ensures that the fundamental aspects of the political relationship cannot be changed without the consent of both of the parties. Article 1 also recognizes U.S. sovereignty in the Northern Marianas and the authority of the Congress to pass laws which will be effective there. Article 2 deals with the Constitution of the Northern Marianas. It provides the eternal mechanism by which the people of the Marianas will formulate and establish their constitution and form of government. Article 2 guarantees the rights of local self-governments and also delineates the scope of the control of the people of the Northern Marianas over their internal affairs. It also calls for a bicameral legislature similar to U.S. Congress. Article 3 provides that upon termination of the trusteeship, the people of the Northern Marianas will become U.S. citizens unless they choose to become U.S. nationals.
Article 4 deals with judicial authority of the U.S. and the Northern Marianas and the relationship between the U.S. federal courts and the local courts in the Northern Marianas. Article 5 deals with the application of the U.S. Constitution and laws to the Northern Marianas. It provides for a formula in which federal laws will be made applicable or inapplicable to the Northern Marianas. Section 501B contains three U.S. constitutional exceptions for the Northern Marianas. More will be said about this later. Article 6 deals with a variety of revenue and taxation provisions, including provisions related to customs and excise taxes, as well as social security benefits and other matters. Article 7 describes the scope and range of federal financial assistance, services, and programs to the people of the Northern Marianas. Article 8 deals with a variety of issues related to property in the Northern Marianas, including U.S. defense needs, return of public land, including military retention land, and restraints on land alienation. A separate technical agreement, which accompanied Article 8, describes the responsibilities and obligations of the parties relative to the land which may be required by the U.S. government for defense purposes. Article 9 deals with the representation of the Northern Mariana Islands in Washington, D.C., and with procedures for consulting between the local governments and the U.S. governments. Article 10 deals with the mechanisms by which the covenant will be approved, establishes dates at which various sections of the covenant will become effective, and provides definitions of certain important terms which are used throughout the document. The covenants arose out of the intense desire of the people of the Northern Mariana Islands to politically separate from the trust territory of the Pacific Islands and to be permanently affiliated with the United States as the people of the Northern Marianas believe that affiliation with the U.S. would provide the best opportunity for them to achieve their political and economic goals in the post-trusteeship road. Throughout the 1950s and 60s, the Northern Marianas sought to achieve their goals of separation from the trust territory and affiliation with the U.S. through political reunification with the U.S. territory of Guam. However, all attempts at reunification failed because the U.S., in line with United Nations policy, opposed separate political status negotiations for the Northern Marianas, as it will lead to the breakup of the trust territory. The Northern Marianas dropped reunification with Guam as a political option after Guam voters rejected reunification in 1969, and thus the Northern Marianas decided to pursue a Commonwealth status with the U.S. Despite U.S. and U.N. opposition, the Northern Marianas continued seeking separate political status negotiations, and their persistence paid off as after the strategic interests of the U.S. changed in the early 1970s, the U.S. approved separate political status negotiations with the Northern Marianas. And as such, the Northern Marianas entered formal political status negotiations with the U.S. on December 13, 1972. These negotiations culminated with the Covenants. The guiding political philosophy behind the Marianas negotiation team was maximizing Marianas self-government under the U.S. Constitution and federal law. This led to problems with respect to how the U.S. Constitution should operate in the Northern Marianas. Especially concerning was Article 4, Section 3, Clause 2 of the U.S. Constitution, otherwise known as the Territorial Clause, which gives Congress plenary powers over U.S. territories. A major question became how to reconcile the desire of the Marianas for maximum self-governments with the plenary powers of Congress. The answers that the negotiators on both sides agreed upon were the mutual consent provision and provisions with explicit exceptions to the U.S. Constitution. Mutual consent ensured that the United States cannot alter critical provisions of the covenants with the Marianas unilaterally, as the fear of the Marianas negotiators was that without mutual consent, the United States Congress could at 
any time interfere with Northern Mariana's self-government. Thus, mutual consent limits the application of the Territorial Clause and by extension, U.S. Congress's plenary power over the Northern Mariana Islands. The mutual consent provision is in Section 105 of the Covenant and states that, namely Article 1, 2, and 3, and Section 501 and 805 may be modified only with the consent of the government of the United States and the government of the Northern Mariana Islands. Mutual consent for these specific articles and sections were critical because they contain the fundamental provisions of the Covenant. For example, without mutual consent, the U.S. could revoke the self-government commonwealth status of the CNMI that was established under Article 1 of the Covenants, interfere with the CNMI Constitution in Article 2, and possibly even revoke U.S. citizenship of the people of the CNMI established under Article 3. Mutual consent for Section 501 of the Covenant is especially crucial because Section 501 deals with the application of the U.S. Constitution in the Northern Marianas. Section 501A specify the provisions of the U.S. Constitution that are applicable within the Northern Mariana Islands as if the Northern Mariana Islands were one of the several states. Section 501B makes it clear that the application of these U.S. constitutional provisions to the Northern Marianas as specified in the previous subsection A will not invalidate the power of the U.S. Congress to consent to Section 203, 506, and 805 and the proviso in subsection A of this section. These listed provisions of the covenant, namely Section 203, 805, and the Proviso in 501A, deal with the covenant's three explicit exceptions to the U.S. Constitution. So essentially, Section 501B guarantees that the U.S. will respect these three provisions of the covenants, which would otherwise be considered illegal and unconstitutional in U.S. legal court as Congress has consented to these exceptions. These three constitutional exception provisions were designed to address potential issues and local needs in the Northern Marianas under federal law. The first constitutional exception, Section 203, allowed the Upper House of the Northern Marianas bicameral legislature to be based on factors other than population. And this was to give the much less populous islands of Rota and Tinian equal representation in the upper house as the people of Rota and Tinian feared domination by the much more populous Saipan if the entire Northern Marianas legislature was based strictly on population size. In practice, this meant that all three islands got three representatives in the upper house despite Rota and Tinian having far less people than Saipan. This provision conflicts with the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution as the votes of all U.S. citizens must be equal. The second exception in Section 501A gave the Northern Marianas government the power to limit jury trials. And the rationale was because of the uncertainty about the feasibility of juries in such a small, tight-knit community. This provision conflicts with the Sixth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution as it enumerates that U.S. citizens have the right to trial by jury. And the final exception, Section 805, restricted the acquisition of land to persons only of Northern Mariana Islands descent. The rationale is because of the importance of the ownership of land for the culture and traditions of the people of the Northern Mariana Islands and in order to protect them against exploitation and to promote their economic investments and self-sufficiency. They saw the negative effects of land loss to foreigners in Guam and Hawaii and wanted to avoid this in the Northern Marianas. This provision conflicts with the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution as the acquisition of land cannot be restricted to certain groups. These provisions were mandatory requirements in the Northern Marianas Constitution, hence Article 1, Section 8, dealing with the right of trial by jury, Article 2, Section 2, dealing with the composition of the Northern Mariana Senate, and Article 12, dealing with restrictions on land acquisition in the Commonwealth. 
These provisions in the Northern Marianas Constitution are legally protected by the covenants and have been challenged in federal courts, and each time the courts have upheld these provisions. The question you're probably thinking is, why did the U.S. agree to these constitutional exceptions, as well as mutual consents? The reason was because as the administering power under the trusteeship system, the U.S. did not possess sovereignty over the Northern Marianas. As the administering power, the U.S. was obligated under international law to respect the rights of self-determination for the people of the Trust Territory of the Pacific, which includes the Northern Marianas. If the U.S. wanted sovereignty over the Northern Marianas once the trusteeship ends, the U.S. would have to persuade the Northern Marianas to accept U.S. sovereignty, and this required the U.S. negotiators to meet the critical terms of the Northern Marianas. And these critical terms are the ones listed in Section 501B. The sections specified in Section 501B are an integral part of the agreements defining the political relationship between the Northern Mariana Islands and the United States. The drafters of the covenant noted that without these provisions, the accession of the Northern Mariana Islands to the United States would not have been possible. The covenant was negotiated over the course of 27 months from December 1972 to February 1975. Once negotiations were finished, the proposed covenant was signed by the negotiators on February 15, 1975 in Saipan. And five days later, the Marianas District Legislature unanimously approved the covenant. And it was put in submission to the people in a plebiscite. On June 17, 1975, the people of the Northern Mariana Islands overwhelmingly approved the covenants, with 78.8% of eligible voters voting in favor of the covenants. Then, the U.S. Congress approved Joint Resolution 549, the Covenant Bill, titled Covenant to Establish a Commonwealth for the Northern Mariana Islands in Political Union with the United States of America. And on March 24, 1976, U.S. President Gerald Ford signed the Covenant Bill, which thereupon became Public Law 94-241. Through the approval and implementation of the Covenant, the people of the Northern Marianas have freely exercised their rights of self-determination and subsequently removed from the United Nations list of non-self-governing territories. If you liked and enjoyed the video, consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue to produce more Pacific Studies content. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, turn on all notifications, follow me on social media, and a special seduce Masi to Patreon supporters Putiun and Pim Limtiako. Seduce Masi for watching Guahusi Pulen and Pulen has spoken. Esta.